Hey everyone, by the end of this video, you will know how to create a UI table view line by line. So of course, the first thing to do is actually create our table view, right? So we can say var my table view is going to be of type UI table view. And it's going to be open equal to these open and close brackets where I create a variable where I say let table view be equal to a UI table view like that and instantiate it create a new one and then we're just going to return that table view lastly we just need these open and close parentheses to make sure that executes the reason I did this is because anytime you want to customize how your table view behaves or looks you can do that here like if I want to change the table view uh, dot layer dot border width I can do that with inside this closure and it's going to neaten up my code and make sure I always know where I'm changing those attributes. So down here in view did load, I want to specify my table views frame. All right. So that's going to be where it is positioned and how big it is. All right. So for this example, I want my table views frame to just be equal to the same uh, frame as the view, which means it's going to take up the entire screen. Next, we won't see anything unless we say for the view to add a sub view and pass in my table view. All right, so now the table view should be there. So if we build and run this, we should see the starting foundation for our table view start to form. Okay, so as you can see, uh, the simulator has a little bit of trouble working with table views, but we have a table view here. It's just that we don't have any cells in it, we don't have any data, and it's blank for the moment. Okay, so how we add uh, data to the table view is first we need an array or some sort of source to pull from and as my table view is going to be a list of some sort um, I would like to just make a list of animals so I'm gonna say var animal array of type array of strings it's going to be equal to and I'm just gonna code these in uh, by saying dog cat just make a few animals bear, bat for the sake of rhyming, and then something like otter, however many you like. This is just my array of animals. And so this is the list that I want my table view to display as they are typically known for displaying information in a list format. So to allow the table view to get the information from this array and display it, we need to let the table view know whose its delegate is and where it's getting its data. So in this view controller, you can see it's a type of UI view controller, but we're also going to give it the inheritance of being a UI table view delegate and a UI table view data source. All right, so it's going to give us, it's going to be a little cranky at the moment just because it tells us that if we want this view controller to manage the table view, then it needs to use two functions in order for that table view to be able to operate and if you click on the error here it'll give you these two functions but I'm just gonna copy them uh, down on the bottom here just to neaten up my code so the first function that the table view needs in order to operate properly is it needs to know how many number of rows are gonna be in each of its sections so this function is called number of rows in section and it's looking to return a type of integer so we could say return any number and we could count one two three four five up here in our animal array and pass in return five and it would be totally happy with that but the thing is if we change anything about our array we add or we take away animals then that five is no longer going to be correct and we're going to get a crash so the best method is to say animal array dot count that way, each time that it reloads the data on our table, it always is checking how many items are in this array, and we don't have to hard code that in or change our code later. So the second function that we need for the table view to operate properly is it needs to know what each of its cells in the table view look like and what cells they are. So this function is called cell for row at. All right, and it's looking to return a UI table view cell. Before we can create a cell, however, we have to register a cell with our table view. 
to register a cell, it's as easy as saying my table view dot register. And it's going to give you this first function here. The cell class is going to be UI table view cell dot self, just like that. And the reuse identifier can be any string that we're going to use to identify that type of cell. And so I'm just going to say cell ID, just like that. Like I said, this function is looking for us to return a table view cell for our uh, table view to use. So we say let cell be equal to, and what kind of cell is it going to be? It's going to be my table view dot dq reusable cell with identifier. And we're going to use the same identifier here that we used above and pass in cell ID. So we could make sure that we are very careful and make sure that both our strings match up. But the best practice is to go up here and declare a variable, just call it cell ID, and make it equal to a string cell ID. And this way, instead of possibly making mistakes and getting a crash and we don't know why, we can actually just pass in that variable which holds our string for us. This way we don't get any spelling errors and we don't get unreasonable crashes. All right, and last thing we have to do is return that cell, which the function is now perfectly happy because we're returning that cell, but it really won't look like much. It'll be a blank cell. And let's just unwrap that with the bang operator. So now this function is going to be happy because we're passing in a UI table view cell, the one we just created by dequeuing the one we registered with our table view. All right, but it really won't look like much until we add some text to the cell and that'll complete our list. To do that, we'll say cell dot text label dot text is going to be equal to and we can set this to any string. And that means that we would have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, we'd have five cells up here, all with saying, let's say we said success. We build and run that. So just a quick thought, I do this all the time where I build and run looking for my UI table view. And after I've put in all my data, I still don't see anything. And the reason is you have to right up in the section of view did load, you have to let your table view know, although we've given the view controller the ability to be a UI table view delegate and a UI table view data source and it gave us these nice functions here. Uh, our table view still doesn't know that this view controller is its delegate and its data source. So it's as simple as saying my table view dot delegate is equal to self which refers to our view controller here. And then my table view dot data source is equal to self. So now our table view knows it should be getting its information from this view controller and it'll find these two functions and use that. Well, great. Now we have five cells that each say success and we have our table view functionality. We can click on the cells, but what we wanted was a list of animals from our animal array. So how do we get the cells to display each of the animals and how do we know how to iterate through each of these in our array? So this function has given us a variable of index path. And an index path is a combination of a section and a row. And we can use that row property to set our cells with the right list of animals. Instead of saying success five times in a row, we could say animal array, and then give it the indicator, let's say zero. And zero would give us dog five times in a row. But with index path, we can access the row and match it to the row of our array. And we know we'll never go out of bounds of that array because in our number of rows in section, we are always passing in the animal array dot count. All right, so instead of saying zero as a subscript, we can say index path dot row. So as we build and run this, we now should see our table view with dog, cat, bear, bat, otter, all in a list just as we wanted. All right, so there you have it. So now that we have our table view functioning correctly, there's still a lot more you can do as far as customization and functionality. If you wanna see more of these methods that do a lot more for the table view, uh, simply hold command, go up to UI table view delegate and jump to definition. In here, you can see all the functions that change how the table view reacts. 
All right, some of the best ones are did select row at, which provides functionality for when the user taps on a cell. Some other ones are things for changing the height of the cells or changing how they transition or whatnot. And so really use these to your advantage to create the table view exactly how you want it.